All right, so first of all, I would like to dedicate this shiur to the speedy recovery of uh, uh, Shmuel Yosef ben Chana Sara and Rachamim ben Tova. Rachamim ben Tova. El na refalem, el na refalem, refuash lema, beramah chaverem, veshesa gideem, cheni ratzon venomar amen. Amen. Parashat shalach lecha. Ah, I have so much to talk about this parasha. So much to talk about. I, I really want to talk about uh, e- equality and liberalism and stuff like this, but I'll save it maybe for during the week. I want to talk about, uh, talk about a revolution. All right, let's talk a little bit about the, you know, we can, we can go away from the words Meraglim, uh, so let's go, let's talk a little bit about a person from that group of spies, and his name is? Kaleb ben Yefuneh. See? Kaleb ben Yefuneh. Kaleb ben Yefuneh gets a schut, a tremendous bracha from HaKadosh Baruch Hu because he had what the Torah says, Ruach HaKheret, a different spirit that was with him at the time. And of course, we have a few questions to ask. What, what is this Ruach HaKheret? My Yeshua did not have Ruach HaKheret, and so on. Mabidiu Korepo. Usually we wrap the two of them together, and we miss that. So maybe this year we'll try not to miss it. The Pasuk says, Ve'avdi, Kalev, Ekev, Hayyata, Rucho, Acheret, Imo, Ve'emale, Look at the look at the pasuk. it's very interesting. So in the merit of the ruach acheret that was in Kaleb, as we say, he got the special baracha from Makadosh Baruch And of course, what is that ruach acheret? Ruach acheret is what separates basically Kalev from the rest of the spies, they spoke badly about the land, and he, Kalev ben Yefune, Ari, the Ruach Acheret was with him, did not act the same way as they did. But of course, the question is, and you know, what happened with Yeshua? Because Yeshua, as we said, Yeshua didn't have Ruach Acheret. I mean, he. He, he also did not take part in this whole conspiracy of the spies. I mean, really, there's so much to talk about this thing. So much to talk about. So, of course, we are not the one, the first ones to discover America. And uh, the Ora Chaim, which his name is? Chaim Benatar. Benatar, thank you. Holds that Yoshua did not have the Ruach HaKheret. But he understands that concept of Ruach HaKheret in a totally different way, in a quite surprising different way than what we got used to. You know, we think about Ruach HaKheret, so it means that he had some kind of like a spiritual, you know, uh, high. You know, he, he, he smoked that spliff a little bit and he got this, uh, he got enlightened. By the way, it never happens, right? If you smoke dope, if you smoke, if you smoke dope, you are a dope, right? <laughs> and let's look at what the ben, the the Ora Chaim says. And I'm quoting: Perusha Katuv Hu Al Zeh Aderech. That's what it means. Ve'avdi Kalev. Ve'tam Shani Koreoto Avdi. I mean, there's only other person that the Kadosh Baruch Hu called Avdi, and that's Moshe Rabbeinu. And he calls Kalev Avdi. And it says Ekev, which is means. Because he had that other spirit. Even though the Yeshua did not speak like the other spies, he had a reason why Yeshua did not do it. And why the reason the Yeshua did not do it, the Orachaim says, Tfilat Moshe Hetzilto Mi the Tfilah that Moshe Rabbeinu prayed for Yehoshua 
that's what saved him. That was his his uh, schut. She nichnas begeder sakanat yetzer hara vechevrato harishaa. He entered the whole the whole realm of yetzer hara and all the uh, all the chevre over there, which is really really bad. It says vetachel ruach hara alef amo. In other words, the ruach hara we always think it became like the spirit of holiness. But Ruach Ra'a penetrated Kalev as well. We always think that the two of them were like, you know, you know, uh, the, two, the two righteous ones and so on and so forth. But here comes, where are my glasses? Here comes the, uh, <laughs> here comes the, uh, the Orach Haim. He says, no, Yoshua was saved because Moshe prayed for him. Kalev was about to fall, but he had Ruach Ra. It started, it started to bubble inside of him. He started to feel little, little things that are a little different than what he got used to. And, and, and we should all pay attention to that because the Yetzer Ra doesn't come to us like this. Bang! All of a sudden he's there. He creeps on you slowly, 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 slowly. Before you know, you miss like three days of Yeshiva. <clears throat> <laughs> So pay close attention. And the proof of that, he says, al He went to, to Hebron. He went to Ma'at HaMachpelah. And he, and he, uh, and he uh, went to, to pray over there. There was an other spirit with him. Even though he had that bad Yetzer Hara start to bubbling inside of him. He fulfilled my commandments. He took his ego or whatever was bubbling inside of him and he says, that to the side. I am a servant of God. I got to do what he says to do. I like it, don't like it. I have other desires. That's what I need to do. Guys, pay very close attention. Please pay very close attention because it is applicable to all of us. All of us. It's amazing. In other words, Pirush Hishlim Acharit Sonoit Barach. He did whatever Kadosh Baruch Hu wanted. Vedigdek Lomar Bederech Zeh. Kadosh Baruch Hu was very specific to mention that. Let's say she Yesh Ba Adam Shnei Yoatzim. A person has two two uh, polars inside of him, two polarizing you know factors inside of him. Yetzer Ha Ve Yetzer Ve Yetzer Atov. Uh, there's a, a bad advisor and a good advisor. He says Yoetz, right? And the good advisor tells him to go after Hashem. He went after the one who gave him the advice to go after Derech Hashem. That's what Chazal said in Masechet Kiddushim in Daf Lametet Amud Bet. A person don't play lottery today. A per, actually maybe. A person that comes in Avera Leyado. I mean, it's very interesting. How would a person come in Avera? I understand Ba Mitzvah. Avera Ba Leyado? The question is like this. If you, if you, all of a sudden you have a chance to do an Avera, you know for sure this is not from Shamayim. This is from you. You need to ask yourself, what have I done to come to do this? Or to come to the situation that I have an option to do it. Avera Baal Yado, he says, Venitzol Mimena, and you saved from it, you did something for it, not Nimno Sachar Ke Ose Mitzvah. You get the reward as you did the mit, a, a, a mitzvah, the opposite mitzvah, or the, 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 the opposing mitzvah for, for that. Veze Eino Bi Yehoshua. That's not the case in Yehoshua. Lama? Ki lo aita ruho acheret imo le'at oto midarech ha-sechel ki Moshe menao. He did not get this special reward that Kalev did because Yehoshua prayed for him. So he went already like uh, immunized to that. He didn't have to go through that. Ve'yesh koach betfilot ha-tzadikim gam lebchina zo. Besot tzadik moshel b'yirat Hashem. There is a, a, a remes for that. A secret for that when it comes to tefillah of tzaddikim, vehaven, and understand that we're not going into this. 
אשר על כן זכה כלב שיקרא עבד השם כמשה רבנו עליו השלום. And that's what caused הקדוש ברוך הוא to give him the title of D, my servant, as משה רבנו did. רבותיי, you don't have to, I don't know about you, but climbing a mountain is a very difficult thing. Climbing a mountain is a difficult thing. Especially if you are 80 something years old, to climb a mountain, you know, in the desert, at night. You don't have to climb this mountain. All you have to do is to prevent that that comes to your way, the Avera that comes your way. And you could also be married in the title of D, my servant, by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You don't have to go to Glacier Park either. <laughs> and it says, so therefore, so therefore, Ruach uh, HaKheret is a nickname for Yetzer HaRa, and Kalev, like any other humans, had two Yetzerim, Yetzer Tov and Yetzer Ra, and his Yetzer Ra started to, start to uh, awaken, and he started to follow what the Meraglim would do. The Meraglim, you see, as they were going, they, they kind of, and that's what we always do. We grind these concepts inside of us over and over and over again, And then we all come out, I mean, for example, let's say, for example, let's say Yeshua and I want to practice a certain lie, right? So we'll say it to each other so many times, even, I mean, if we're going to be identical, everybody knows we're lying. But if we're going to say it, you know, more or less similar, and we'll, you know, we'll convince others, however, the danger is to a certain point, we're going to convince ourselves as well. So he was going with them, and he started to listen to them, and he started to partake in, With that that they were doing that they were saying, and he understand this is this is not, and he says she nichnas begeder sakanat yetzer ara vechevoto arisha betachel ruach ra lefamo. It start to bubble inside of him. Reayal adavar, right? A proof of that the Orach Haim finds in the words of Chazal in Masechet. Zvachim. Sota daf nun dalet la medalet amud alaf bet. על הפסוק, ויעלו בנגב ויבואו עד חרן. ויעלו בנגב ויבואו עד חרן, ויבואו מביילה, אמר הרב מלמד שפירש כלב מיצת מרגלים, כלב, where they were going, he says, okay guys, you know, I'm, 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 I'm taking a detour, over they're doing recon over there to the קברים עובדי האבות, והלך ונשתתח על קברי האבות, אמר להם, אבותיי, my forefathers, בקשו עליי רחמים, שאנצל מעצת מרגלים. You see, you have to also evaluate the people that are around you. I mean, truthfully. What are the people around you causing you to do? You are a part of, or your behavior, or the way you think is also a part of your, of your environment. That's why Rabbi Yusif Ben Kismar says, אין אני דר אלא במקום חכמים, because I want to be influenced by my environment. Don't think it could be like, like Lot, right? They are going to be in Zdom and then he's going to like save the world. You know, he was like Shaliach, you know, going over there to Zdom to save everybody. It's like, you know, going to a rabbi in Bangkok. Yeah? You get the drift. You can't do that. Do you understand, Rebs? Maybe Montana. But... So, so, so he says... Uh, so it says, according to the, uh, according, according to the, to the Orachayim, Kalev went to pray by the Avod because he feels that he's draw, being drawn after his Yetzer Hara, after that quote-unquote Ruach HaKheret that was in him, and, 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 uh, and, not, and, and in order not to be a part of this crime in which they were about to commit, right, he went... To, to the Avot. Now, what's so special about it? That's a tremendous thing. That is a, a great spiritual internal point that a person feels that he's about to do something before it's too late. He goes, he acknowledges it and he, and he addresses that. So, you know, as I said to you before, you know, you need to evaluate your friends or your environment around you. What are your friends making you do? If you think that you are controlling your friends, you're wrong. What are your friends causing you to do? 
What are your friends causing you to, to deal with, to think about? Well, if they're good, stay with them by all means. But if you know that they are doing things that are not, all of a sudden you find yourself doing that, by all means disconnect. That For that you need to be a gadol, spiritually a great person. And it says, Yoshua, right, we already says, and we said that beforehand, right, because it says, Vaikra Moshe Yoshua Benun, Yoshua. Ya Yoshua, Yoshua Ham Yatzat Meraglim. Akadosh Baruch Hu will help you from, the, from those Meraglim. In a way, Moshe knew already what's going to happen. Vaino Dichtiv, Ve'avdi Kalev, Ekev Aita Baruch Acheret, and so on and so forth. So the Tfula of Moshe, the prayer of Moshe, helped Yoshua uh, to control and subdue his Yetzer Ara. However, uh, however, who was who was really taking care of Kalev? Kalev was left like this alone. So, and of course, if you're going to ask yourself, what's yet, what yet Sarah did they have? What yet Sarah did they have? What they didn't want to go. They they liked the desert so much. <laughs> I don't know. La Briot. Maybe if you go to Moab in uh, Utah, you know, you tell me, or Santa Fe, you know, it's like nice days, but, you know, schlepping with like three million Jews, let me tell you, let me tell you, that, that ain't fun. <laughs> so they wanted to go. So what's the work? What's the Yetzer that the Meraglim have exactly, and so on and so forth? And, and really, how do, we, how do we deal with this? How do we deal with that? So there is a word here that its root appears few times in regards to the Chet of the Meraglim, and that is the word, okay, the word is, Shlach Lecha Anashim, Ve'yaturu Et Eretz Kedan Asher Anidot Ele Vnei Israel, and then it says, Ele Shmot Anashim, Yemashem Shalach Moshe, Latur Et Ha'aretz, so See, over and over and over and over again. So we could see here straightforward that the key word to understand the parasha of the Meraglim is really Latur. Latur really means to search, to search, to spy over, to, to really... Uh, look look carefully. Tayar is a tourist. And and what what, the, what does a tourist do? He comes to look at things from an external point of view. You know, let's say you go to uh, where do people go? People go to Dominican Republic. One way ticket. Well now it is. <laughs> right? It's nice, they have a little salsa, merengue, right? Free vodka until you drop. <laughs> but you, you go to the Dominican Republic and you would say, what would you say? Oh, this place is great. Well, how about Jamaica? Let's go to Jamaica. Jamaica, Bahama, right? What's in, ba what's in Jamaica? What's the name of the place? They go Negril. All these places. Beautiful. People love Jamaica. You set foot aside of the tourist area because you see everything externally. Let, let's see, you know, ask the Jamaicans they come to America how good it is in Jamaica. <laughs> Oh, Cancun is wonderful. If it was so wonderful, why are the Mexicans going to knock on the border here? <laughs> right? You, you, you don't see so many Americans going to live in Mexico or going to live in France. I have one idiot to do it, you know. Everybody comes to America. It tells you something. A tourist looks at things from the outside, does not look at things from, from the inside. Now, uh... And and in what whoa, and in what uh, if we, if we're going to look, for example, to on us, we also have uh, limbs of our body in which we so-called spy with, which is of course is the heart and the eyes, And it's very interesting to see that even this world, I mean, this word tattoo doesn't appear so many times in the Torah. However, it does appear in Parashat. In Parashat Tzitzit, 
And this is, of course, Latu, Ureitem Oto Ushatem Et Kol Mitzvot Hashem, Vasetem Otam, right? Velo, ma? Sasuru. Taturu, no Sasuru. Sasuru. No Sasuru. Velo Taturu, Achare, Vachem, Vachare, Nechem, Asher ma? Asher Atem Zoni Machareem. That's exactly what the, that's exactly what the Meraglim did. Now, you have to put, you have to, Rashi, when you're talking about this, Rashi pays very close attention to these words and he writes, Velo taturu achare levavchem, kmo mitura ha'aretz, the same thing as the Meraglim did. Halev ve'ha'enayim, the eyes and the heart, hem Meraglim laguf. They are the spies for the body. Umesarsim lo et ha'averot. And they are, they are the ticket office for the body to do the Averot. The eyes see, Ayn Ra'a, the Lev Chomed, and then the heart desire, and then the body is being carried along together with that. Now, of course, we have a few questions about Rashi. So the question is, for example, we have two questions on Rashi. Why the Torah says the word Velotatur, like, like a spy? We know that Tatur is a spy. ולא תתורו, שיוצא, ולא תלכו אחרי לבבכם. למה לא תתורו, right? And which is again, the same לשון, the same words, the same thing that we use for the word of the מרגלים. What is exactly Rashi wants to tell us with that, that we do, that really reminds him of the חטא מרגלים, what's the connection between ציצית and, 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 and spying on the land? And B, why is Rashi writes, Ha'ayin ro'a ve'alev chomed ve'aguf oseh ma'aseh avera? Because the, the, in, in the Torah it says, Achare levavchem ve'achare enechem. Rashi first of all wrote, Ha'ayin ro'a ve'alev chomed. But, but, but when we have it, Achare levavchem ve'achare enechem, in other words, the heart comes, then the eye. So it's a different order. Why is it like that? And, and we could try to explain it that the pgam, or the blemish of which the Meraglim did, or what they, what they sinned was, that they had what? Ein ra'a. They had an ein ra'a. Yeshua and Kalev also saw what the Meraglim saw. They all went together. So why is the Meraglim, you know, spread such stories that really, uh, uh, reflected uh, uh, you know something completely different why they were so negative what what exactly happened the answer is uh, because the difference is because Yeshua and Kalev had an Ayn Tova and the Meraglim had Ayn, uh, Ayn Ra'a lo Ayn Ara you know like foot through Ayn Ara Ayn Ra'a <laughs> however that Ayn Tova and Ayn Ra is regarding reality Moshe and, uh, and what's it, and Kalev had a tremendous emuna. That has to do with emuna. If you are a positive person or a negative person, it is not necessarily a trait of a personality that you are, but rather a reflection of the level of emuna you have. Of course, you can't be like a moron and saying, oh, Yebbe said that, and listen, the Nazis are knocking on the door. Alti dag, Yebbe said we're not talking about this. But, uh, but your experiences in life, the way you experience life, and by the way, there is a difference between living life and experiencing life. Live life, you are to, to, to live life is like a chamor, you know? A donkey also lives life. However, to experience it, that's something completely different. When you are a negative person, it shows that you have very little emuna. When you a positive person, it shows that you have emuna and you have bitachon. Right? They had emuna that Akadosh Baruch Hu brings them to the land and brings them to the place that is the best place. Akadosh Baruch Hu would not would not have brought them to the Sahara Desert. He brought them to Earth Israel. Akadosh Baruch Hu did not bring them to Switzerland. I mean, it's very nice to have Alps there, but apparently it's not the best place. I mean, and if, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, yet I have seen so many people for so long fighting over one piece of land. I mean, 
technically you can have more beautiful places. You know, you know, like you go to uh, to Switzerland and the mountains and to the Black Forest in Germany in the Autobahn, right? Or you go to the fjords in, in Norway. All oh, kind of like, oh, where, where else would you go? To Alsace in France. <laughs> Apparently, it's not so good. There's something that we don't understand because we look at things from what? We look at things with our eyes. We don't look at things the way we should look with them, with an with an effort, with an emunah. There's something in Eretz Israel that is superior to all other places. I mean, again, otherwise, why would everybody fight over it? The Jews, the Philistines, not no Palestine. Right? <laughs> the Philistines, the Givon name, the Phoenicians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Byzantines, the Crusades, the, 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 the Muslims that came later on with the Allah Akbar, Allah Snack Bar, whatever they came with, right? The, the Turks, the Ottomans, the Mongols even came there. Those Mongolians. <laughs> They couldn't build a, build a shitty world over there. <laughs> Very hard to build a wall, right? Where is it? Yeah, city wall, right? Yeah, city wall. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Right? Those Mongolians. Everybody fights over it's Israel until today. I heard today, it's going to be a little longer. Do you guys mind, by the way? No. I have to tell you a story about the about Revol de I, I I heard the story today. Man... Loved it. When Rav Mordechai Eliyahu Lava Shalom was, you know, you know he has the same yurt as the Shagat Arya. Rav Mordechai Eliyahu Lava Shalom was invited one time to go to France. Give la France. So they took him to places, they took him to museums and so on and so forth. Therefore, he was supposed to meet with the, with the famous Jacques Chirac. Like he was, I don't know, prime minister or the president or one of those things. Jacques Chirac. So he went to the Louvre <laughs> Museum, and they saw the things. They have a chair there, for example, the chair of Napoleon. You know Napoleon? You know Napoleon? Napoleon became Caesar at the year Tav Kuf Samech, who it kaser, Nia Kesar, Tav Kuf Samech, which was the year 1800. He wanted to build Beit HaMikdash. He wanted, yeah! Mm -hmm. He wanted, he, because he, he, he said, the Arabs don't really like, you know, help me. I'll go get to the Jews. The Jews will help me. But then he went to Russia, called Nafal. He drank too much vodka, and he went there. What happened there? Putin did something. But, uh, and then they show him a crown of Louis XVI. They show him Mordechai this. And Rav Mordechai says, uh, how much is this thing worth? So the guy looks at him and says, well, what do you mean? Price like this. Money, I want to buy. So the guy says to him, Rabbi, <laughs> So he went to look at like this. Later on, he met Jacques Chirac. Came to Jacques Chirac. Jacques Chirac says, Hello. He didn't say hello. He said, Hello, right? <laughs> My name is Jacques, right? Inspector Cluzer. So he came to him and, said, and he said to him like this, Oh, you know, I was today in the, in the museum. I saw Napoleon's chair. I saw the crown and so on and so forth. Uh, how much? <laughs> how much would you sell it? So the interpreter did not interpret it right. He, he, he omitted it. Uh, Mordechai understood that he guy did not say. He said, "Listen, he says, So he says, "Okay, get somebody else." So he says, "Say word by word, word by word, what I'm saying." Et Jacques Chirac, the the. the how much would he sell it for? Million dollars, two million dollars, ten million dollars, a hundred million dollars. How much are you willing to sell the chair that Napoleon puts his derriere on and whatever they put his watermelon head on, you know, the, the Louis the Sixteenth? So Jacques Chirac says, we cannot sell it. It's 200 years old, you know, we cannot sell it. It's a part of, of, a part of, 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 the, of, of, of the French people. That's what we're all about. That defines us. So at that point, Rav Mordechai Eliyahu said to him, 
and you ask us to sell Jerusalem for the Arabs that has been with us for 3,000 years? So Jacques Chirac says, he says, I heard a lot of people talking, but I never heard anybody talking with such bravery and so, so being so stern about Jerusalem ever before. Ask somebody if he's willing to sell the American Constitution, the original one. It's a good line. That was Rav Mordechai Eliyahu. So they understood that Eretz Israel is the best place in the world, right? And, they, and why? Because they have a Muna. And on contrary, the rest of the Meraglim saw Eretz Israel be'ayin ra. And that's why every place they went, they saw, the, they looked to see what's wrong with the place. It's all in your, things are not good and not bad. Things are the way you interpret them. And, and that's what it says, right? According to Chazal, it says, Eretz Ochlea Yoshvea, Eretz Ochlea Yoshvea. Everywhere that we pass, we find people buried dead. HaKadosh Baruch Hu did them, did them a favor, of course. The Midrash says us that they were busy burying the people so the people can, the spies can go without being, without being caught. They didn't see it like this is a miracle. They saw, ah, everybody's dead here. So the spies have a very they had a, a negative first initial uh, 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 impression on everything, everything they saw. That's why they say very negative things. Even though there were such great people, they were not capable of, of breaking away from that. And because of that, they spoke badly about Eretz Israel. So the Meraglim, their sin, the chet was that they allowed their heart to decide that they would, how they're going to interpret things negative. And as Rashi writes to us, Now we have to know how to choose. So therefore how we choose. So how could Kalev overcome this whole entire thing? How, what could he do? We said Yeshua help, uh, was helped by Moshe. But how could Caleb could do it? The answer is, and that's the lesson to all of us, he himself. In other words, only you can help yourself. And you should know that regardless of all the brachot of all the tzaddikim, right now you're not, nobody's like Moshe Rabbeinu, you need to do all the work to help yourself for the Yetzirah. You, not anybody else, you. Caleb needed to strengthen himself and to overcome himself and make a lot of effort, really like superior effort, to elevate his, his, his nefesh, to really be gibo, to be a hero. Yeah, you're a beard there. Uh, right? And that's, for, and that's what it says, Melamed, Shepiresh Kalev Miatzat Meraglim Valach Shetach Akirve Avot. Right? He, he, he needed a lot of koach to separate from this bad group, from this bad company from this wild bunch and go to where he knew he, can, he could really derive and, and, and nourish some, some, some different attitude and that's the Kivrei Avot and he went to ask Rachamim on himself that the schut of the Avot will help him to do what Hashem wants him to do you need to pray to, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu for some way to give you help to help you do what he wants you to do. And not to, not to fall down in, 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 into this, how should I say, trap of what we call ruach acheret, the negativity. That's why negative people are horrific. And that's why, you know, passive aggressive people or sarcastic people are even worse than them because you don't understand how they penetrate into you. They chew your ear in and they go into your existence. Stay away from people like that. So it says that the prisha of Yeshua from the Raglim for him was easy. Because he did not have yet Sarara, because of Tfilah of Moshe. However, since it was so hard for Kalev to do so, and really demanded from him to really get all his, all his koach, you know, spiritual koach, emotional koach, and he survived that, that was his greatness. In other words, it was very easy for one, and yet very difficult for the other. However, there is a sachar, there is a reward for, for Kalev's hard work 
that because of that, he overcame himself, and the reward is that he was called by the title Avdi, my slave. You are my slave in which I will be proud of. And what is there to be proud of? To be proud of what? And I'm going to tell you this. Is in the way we choose. Now, in Tzitzit, we said beforehand, regarding Tzitzit, it also says, So first of all, we have to go after the heart. Why? Because the heart comes to the eye and to the eyes. You think that the eye, Ayn Ra Velev Chomed, however, according to the Tzitzit, is not like this. The heart would direct your eyes where to go. It's like, imagine I have this system of a radar, right, that directs the eye of the, of the missile to where the target is. The heart is the radar. The eye is the eye of the missile. You see it, and then you lock on it, and then is it good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. But the heart directs it. And you could see it, there are people, and they will walk in the street, say, I don't know, I don't see anybody, you know, not, not dressing snood. I call, see, I call the The other person, Rabbi, let me tell you, I was walking everybody like Chava before the sin. <laughs> no, but one second, we were walking in the same street. You went after your heart, and the other person went out of his heart. But what is your heart really desires? That's where your eyes will go. Whatever your heart desires, your eyes will go, and then you really desire what you saw. You gotta be very careful. So, the heart gives the eye, what happens? The, eyes, the heart gives the eye the opportunity to see what he wants, what you really want. And therefore the eye sees it, and then things come back to the heart, and then really th that's what happens to you. They influence you, and that's, that's, that transformation changes you. And at the end, the body does the avera or the mitzvah, depends on what you will look at it. So when you wear the tzitzit, there's a tzivuy lirot. Ureitem oto. And you see it. A tzivuy lirot. To choose and to look in a good eye. Because when you look at things positively, Mimele, you're not going to fall into chataim. You know, if I, if, I, if I see good things, right? So I don't care about what he has. So if I don't care about what he has, Baruch Hashem, good, good for him. So guess what? There's no need for me to be jealous. If there's no need for me to be jealous, there's no need for me to speak Lashon Ara. There's no need for me to hate him. Because I understand everything comes from Hashem. <coughs> and that's the problem. We don't look appropriately. And therefore the tikkun of the Cheta Meraglim really lays upon wearing a tzitzit. Guys, I wear tzitzit at night also. Even if I told you, if I do something, I take my tzitzit home, I don't want it to get dirty. Before I come to yeshiva, I put it back on. I know Laila loves my tzitzit, I put it on. It's not just for, I'm doing the mitzvah. I want the mitzvah to be me. I want the mitzvah to guide me. <coughs> I want it to be me all the time. That's my shield, that's my spiritual cavalier. You all should wear tzitziot all the time. Go to sleep, take it off. Don't be super tzaddikim. You go to sleep, take it off. But you got to wear it all the time. There's no excuse why not wear tzitziot. So this is probably the reason why the tzitziot is the tikkun of the chet ha-meraglim. The meraglim had ayin ra'a. And they had ayin ra'a la'aretz. They look at things wrong. They look at things bad. Everything is bad. Everything is bad. Always complaining. Always bitching and moaning and complaining and complaining. It is enough already complaining. I'm sick and tired of complaints. <coughs> and that's exactly, that's exactly what happened. That's why they saw bad things. You look for bad things, that's what you're going to see. In tzitzit, we say as what? Ureitem oto. Why we are commended yet to see the tzitzit? Because the tzitzit, we look at the tzitzit from a willingness to see a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Remember, the tchelet of the tzitzit reminds us of the blue of the ocean, the reminds us of the, of the blue of the sky, the reminds us of Kisei HaKavod. So if I don't have tchelet, so the lack of the tchelet reminds me that it used to be and so on and so forth. Fine, I'm not, 
this get further. But the whole purpose when we look at it, and that's maybe the secret why Maran writes in the Shuhan in, in the Bet Yosef that instead of holding four, to hold two, to look at the ten knots of the tzitzit, to remind you of the of the essence, ferot, and so on and so forth. So when you remember Akadosh Baruch Hu, and you remember that Akadosh Baruch Hu, Melech Makiam Lachim, that everything he does is for the best, Mimeli, by doing so, you're going to develop a good eye. An, a positive outlook on life. I hate to see, especially young guys like you, that didn't even dry the milk yet on their upper lip. They're barely hatched out of the egg. And I already have a dismal point of view about life. You can't do it. It's not good. You're going to do it like this. I guarantee you, you're going to be chas v'shalom ba'alei avera. Because then you, then you feel that you have to do the avera. Who am I? I'm a nothing. I'm a nothing. I'm a nothing. So I'm a nothing. Let me do another. I might as well. The Gemara says that. When it comes to Kavod, everybody is like a Ben Melech. Ani, Kavod. Kavod. Come with one Avera. I feel him with the Shifcha in the basement. Me, Ani, Ma, Ani. Nothing. Ani. Nothing. Let's get out, you know. Let one Avera. Take a second. Let one Mitzvah. Ani, Gadol. Ani, no, I can't do that. I'm going to walk with a lula and shake it like this. Come with a Meshuga. Learn from David Amelech. Didn't David Amelech, you know, you know, scold it, what's his name? Michal? He said, Maz, I don't care about That's the whole dancing of the Chatan, even if the Chatan and the לרקוד יבוא איזה רב גדול והוא עוקד לפני חתם וכלה למה שחתם וכלה מרמזין זה רמפין ושכינה ביחד בשביל זה צריך להיות בצניעות ולא להיות כמו כמו איזה פרות בקיבוץ עם כל העטינים בחוץ באמת רבותיי in weddings you have to tell the people please dress up appropriately אי אפשר ככה אין בזה קדושה and then you know what happens יש divorce כי מלכתחילה לא הייתה קדושה בדבר, לא נעשה הדבר לפי דרך השם, לא בא הדבר למילוי רצונו של הקדוש ברוך הוא, אלא למילוי תאוות היצר. So, Be'ezat Hashem, first of all, all the people that need the Refuah Shlema shall have a speedy Refuah Shlema. Amen. And we should, uh, we should be zochet to really see good things, Be'ayin Tova. I really want everybody to try to be a little bit more passionate, not only about the Torah, about Am Yisrael, about Eretz Yisrael, about Torah Yisrael. The Kadosh Baruch Hu will help us to see things in our heart, only good things in our heart. Try to find in everything you do, I told you this before, try to make a practice. Practice this one day. One day without complaining. So one day without complaining. One day, whatever happens, is a good thing about it. You missed the bus, there's a good thing about it. You got a ticket, there's something good about it. You, some, every, whatever happens, gamzul tova, gamzul tova. Try to do it one day, you'll see how your day will be different. You go to sleep, you feel all of a sudden revived because all day long you saw good things. Somebody passed pass you out with a car, let them. Somebody cut you off, beseder. No problem. Maze. That goes later, later. And by doing so, by being positive, by looking at positive, by searching for the good, mainly all of us, our, our actions are going to be straightforward actions. They're going to be ma'asim tovim. And because of that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu yashpi alenu kol tova ubracha. As it says, right, in Sefer Devarim, benetati lefanecha yom et ha-chayim, I wrote like, uh, like, like Sam, but... Uh, לפניך היום את החיים ואת המוות, את הטוב ואת הרע, ובחרת בטוב, ובחרת בחיים. I give you good and bad, but I'm telling you, choose good, because choosing good is choosing life. Why does it say חיים ומוות, טוב ורע? תגיד אחד, למה שניים? Because choosing good is choosing life. Choosing bad is choosing death. If you want to do, have the Shefa of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yashpi Al Kulanu Tamid Tifchar Batov Look at the good thing, don't look at the bad thing Have a Shabbat Shalom